Hey guys, welcome to another stream by yours truly, of course. Um, I've never seen you guys here before, so I'm assuming you guys are new. And welcome, welcome. I always like new people, new faces. Well, technically, you don't, you don't have a face on the internet, I guess, but you know, you know what I mean, right? Um, anyway, so a little bit about this game. Um, this game is I, I just recently found up found a uh, even tougher right I re I just recently found out about this game and apparently it's I've never played this game, okay? Just to get that clear, I've never played this game, so I have no idea what what it's about. But apparently, um this character right here that you see on your screen right now is a yonder character. And if you don't know what that is, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you do know because you follow my channel. Um, basically, she's a psycho, crazy girl, and stuff, so. This should be pretty interesting. Yeah, exactly, that's what I asked when I saw this. It's like, what game is this? It's a visual novel game, if you don't know what that is. It's basically just like a kind of story-based game. There's no actual gameplay or anything. Except for, like, you take different routes, choose different options and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, if you don't know what this game is, it's just, this is right there. Uh, we can just start. Uh, I'm just gonna talk, so or not talk, but well, obviously I'm gonna talk. But I mean, like, I'm gonna. Oh, if if the vo if the music volume is too loud, please you tell me so I can turn it down. If you want to listen to my voice, <laughs> actually, I'm just gonna turn it down just a bit. That way, everyone can hear me. Um, talk. Hold on, let me adjust my microphone real, real quick. Hopefully that sounds a little bit better. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> let me get my narrated voice. John had always thought of himself as, as a stable person. St stability worked out well when he was just trying not to let the little things get to him, get him down. It wasn't so great when everything was crumbling around him. When the entire world started seeming gray and flat, then he began wondering if all the stability would kill him and he would and if he would care when it, it did. If there weren't any highs or lows anymore, whatever happened to him, John didn't feel happy or sad. He just... Hey, hey, what are you doing spacing out, man? You're a real headache these days, John. You going to float away on us? Sorry. Just distracted. A moment later, he started drifting away again. Even his friends' voices were nothing but buzzing in his ears, meaningless sounds echoing in his hollow head. Uh, as far as as if this game is new or stuff, that I have no idea. Uh, you're gonna have to go on the Steam page. They do have a Steam page, so if you go on Steam, if you have it, um, or you can just go to their website. You can just look it up um, when it was released. I have no idea when it was released, so beats me. They weren't even really his friends. They were just, they were friends with happy-go-lucky person he'd been at the beginning of high school. These days they joked about him being no fun, but it was more than a joke. They'd get tired of him, find someone else, and then he'd be, al then he'd be alone. Ba so basically, um, from what I've read in the um, summary of the game, it's basically the main protagonist, which is I, who's reading or his thoughts right now, He's uh, a really depressed person. He has depression, so it's... This game has really dark themes, just so you know. So if you're not comfortable with hearing that kind of stuff, then yeah, you better not watch this. So, just saying, FYI. He wasn't sure whether or not that, that would be worse. Whoa, is that creepy chick staring at us? I think she is. Who is that anyway? Lizzie Doss, I think. In our year, right, John? John doesn't... Sh John, doesn't she have math with you or something? It took John a second to even register the question. They were st starting to staring at some girl who was staring back at them. She looked the same as all the other girls at their school. Shire, maybe. She could probably hear them talking about her. He wanted to say something but kept silent. Damn, she is really staring. 
Is she staring at us or John? I think it's him. <laughs> you think she's a stalker? Oh shit, look at those eyes. Ow. You know something's gonna go up. Yeah, those are some crazy eyes. <laughs> it's funny because I just said that. You better watch out, John. You're a real sad suck these days. But you can do better than her. Shut up. Those words were past his lips before he could stop them. Why did he have to open his mouth now, of all times? But he couldn't let them keep talking about her like that. People called him creepy or crazy all the time, and he hated it. But after these two words, he just stood there with like an idiot. Even when something mattered to him, he couldn't pull himself together. What's wrong with you, man? Don't say things like that about people you don't know. She's just hanging out he up here like we were. Ah, uh, no, she's giving us some serious crazy eyes. Just leave her alone, okay? She hasn't done anything to you. Sheesh. Okay, man. You think she's going to fall in love with you as her handsome protector or something? Haha, <laughs> that, that be just like John. You want to talk to a crazy girl? Be our guest. We're heading back to class. Don't wait up, man. <laughs> the way her eyes moved, John thought she was focused on him so intensely that she might not have even heard what she, the other said. Did it even bother her? He wished he could be like that instead of the smallest of things sending him crashing into a state of worthlessness. But maybe she was just like him, just capable of hiding it. John cleared his throat and walked up to check on her. Hey, sorry about them. They can be assholes sometimes. Oh, uh, well, I guess I don't have a lot to say. Sorry if we bother you. John slunk away and crashed his own idiocy. She had been fine without him. He just made everything worse. There had been something hard in her eyes, a strength he didn't have. He had probably been projecting all his weakness onto her in the first place. She wasn't like him, wasn't broken. She could shrug off the things his friends had said and get on with her life. At least that meant she could shrug off his annoyance too. She'd probably just forgot all about him. Thank you. You're so kind. Such a kind person. The kindest person. The only person. Oh shit, her smile's creepy. Oh crap, I can't look at that. Oh shit, I just, get, I just got these ones. <laughs> I found you. I finally found you. I found you. I found you. I found you too. <laughs> Crimson Grey. Ah, oh, snap. It's pulling off a Doki Doki Literature Club thing. <laughs> the teacher's voice was incomprehensible, incompre but John knew he must be picking up, at, picking it up at, on some level. He wasn't sure how, but even though he stumbled through the day, he was doing K in school. He could seem normal whenever he wanted to. It just didn't feel worth it. That was almost the worst part. He seemed normal even though nothing was normal anymore. It wouldn't even be normal again. What did Miss Smith say? High functioning depression. Such an awful empty phrase. At least class was over now. He could go home, sleepwalk through his assignment, and then fall unconscious. At least for a few hours. He... C then he became aware of her. Sh she was watching. Maybe she wanted to thank him? No. He was being stupid. He'd done nothing worth thanking. More likely, she just wanted something from him. Or, most likely of all, maybe she didn't care about him and was Im imagining the whole thing. She was still staring, though. Okay, we got some options here. We got ignore her, lose her in the hallways, glare at her, smile at her, go talk to her. Hmm. Since she's looking at me with intense eyes, I wonder... 
I'm gonna try to lose her in the hallways. Let's see what that what happens. The stress of wandering about it was more than he could handle. John slept between students and ducked through the classroom. When he came out out in the hall, other hallway, there was no sign of her. He headed. He needed to get his to his appointment anyway. He didn't want Miss Smith getting mad at him again. Miss Smith was one of the only people John could focus on. He wasn't sure how much good she actually did him aside from prescribing medicine, but at least she tried to help. John, you're not looking so bad today. <laughs> okay, that was pretty bad. Did something did something good happen? A boy your age ought to be more interested in girls. Are you dating someone? No, I can't. Focus on people. Yeah, I think it is a creepy game. M possibly. Hmm. Maybe I could prescribe you something for that. We don't have any hand, any on hand now, but I could get it quickly. That's an advantage of having Koi Tech in town. I don't know what to take this medicine. I don't want to take this medicine anymore. I don't think it's working. Paxteen? But that's the first one you've really responded to. I feel worse. Everything is so gray. Voices just echo. Can I go back to a generic medicine? John, you need to understand that you are deeply, clinically depressed. It's my professional opinion that you should, under no conditions, go off your medication. <laughs> when you're getting used to a medication, there can be some initial side effects. Sometimes things have to get worse before they can get better, okay? Okay. All he heard was that he was too broken for any drug to fix. He was so worthless, even the newest drugs from Koi Tech didn't do anything. I'll renew your Paxteen prescription and see about getting you a comp complementary drug. We'll figure this out, John. Now, why don't you lie down there and we can begin our session, good? Get comfortable. Did anything special happen during the day today? No, it was a normal day. The therapy session quickly fell away into a meaningless buzz. For a short time at least, he didn't feel the emptiness. Finally, or too soon, it was over. Miss Smith told him he was doing well and sent him on his way. John slumped back home. The house was empty, like it always was. Ever since his mother left, his father spent all his time working. He did his homework. He ate. He cleaned the dishes. He sat down in front of the TV and started and stared at it without turning it on. Somehow he dragged himself into bed and, f and fell asleep. The routine used to be comforting, but now it was starting to erode his sanity. His mind had to crack eventually. Maybe it was already happening. For a second, he thought he saw a girl out, out the window. But no, there was nothing. Of course there wasn't. He really was losing it. another day. He had to face it somehow. It seemed impossible until the moment he finally stumbled into class. School was the usual man mindless buzz. There was a job there announced in third period, as if it meant anything at all. Almost everyone in school would either go to work for Koi High Tech, move away, or stay in town and become un unemployed. John wondered which of these, wh which of those would happen to him, but from a distance, as he was thinking about some person he barely knew. His grades were good enough to get into Koi Tech, but the process was so competitive. No, he didn't have enough energy for that. He couldn't imagine moving away, looking for a job in a strange city. Most mornings, the most he could imagine was surviving the day. But his father wouldn't support him, and his mother didn't want him. Once he graduated, there'd be no way he could stay with either of them. What would happen to him then? Would he just become homeless? Sit there on the street begging for change until one night he froze to death? Wow, that just got really dark. Holy crap. Maybe that was all he deserved. John, are you alright? Sorry, sir. I'm paying attention. Honestly. 
I didn't ask that. I asked if you were all right. I'm fine. Well, be sure to talk to the counselor if you're feeling bad, all right? We're lucky to have someone like Miss Smith with us. <sighs> he had to keep it together. He remembered the lessons. But if people were starting to think something was wrong, he, his control was slipping. He had enough time to visit his locker in between periods. There was more Paxton there. He still had an extra dose left for the day. His locker was on the bottom row, so he always had to bend up down and... There was a piece of paper sitting in the middle of his locker. That was, that's all it said. Nothing on the back side, nor the other clues. Probably a girl's handwriting? Who left it? Huh, a note that says cheer up. I wonder who wrote that. That was sarcasm, by the way. Hey, did you see anyone messing with my locker? Huh? Did something get stolen? There's no- there's way too many guys around here for me to notice. It might have been a girl leaving a note. Like, a love note? Keep dreaming, John. You think any girl is going to love your sorry ass? No. Of course no one could love him. So, you didn't see anyone? Okay, thanks. Hey, John. You going to tell me she's a Canadian? I'm heading back to class. See you later. And she's really hot. And she's really hot, right? Your imaginary girlfriend sounds amazing. <laughs> wow, what an asshole. John knew he had he should probably just take some more Pax Pakistan or I I don't know, is that Pakistan? Pakistan or something like that? I don't know. I don't fucking know. And head back to class. Yet he was still holding on to the paper. He wasn't sure why. It really could be a prank, one of those guys trying to trick on, trick him. If so, it would probably be followed by another fake note, asking him to come out under the stupid confession tree, where they let him wait and then laugh at him. But for just a moment, he saw the girl watching him. Could it have been her? By the time he got to class, John had a new theory. She felt sorry for him. He must have looked pretty pathetic, and she recognizes misguided good intentions enough to feel pity. The rest of the school day passed in more of a blur than usual. He might be delusional, but part of John still hoped it wasn't a prank. He headed to his locker, not daring to imagine anything, and there was another paper waiting there for him. They shouldn't say these things about you. Oh shit. It didn't even look like the same person's handwriting. The first had been beautiful calligraphy. This one was a hor horrible scrawl. If it was all a prank, he no longer had any idea where they were going with this. He'd already been beating himself up over saying the wrong thing, so this has to was too much for John. He had to straight home to get help, to get some sleep before the crack before he cracked completely. Ah, uh, sorry, I can't really read. <laughs> I can't read right now. <laughs> the next day, John went went as early as possible and approached his locker anxiously. He wasn't sure what he wanted to find. There was no note this time, but there was a chocolate heart wrapped in foil, set in the exact center of the bottom of his locker. John stared at it for a while, then slipped it into his pocket and headed to class, even though he knew he would be far too early. There was no way he could eat it. If it was really a prank, they might have slipped a laxative or something inside of it. That was some kind of thing his friends thought was funny. But if it was that girl... It didn't matter now. What mattered was that someone clearly knew his locker combination and could get in whenever they wanted, that could be a real problem. He knew he should come up with a solution before tomorrow, but what? Tell a teacher. Tell Miss Smith. Try to watch on the locker. Try to keep a watch on the locker. Replace the lock or leave a note. Mm, so many options. I like how this game gives you so many options. Like, this is, this is really good. I heard there's, you know what, it's funny because this game actually has like, um, 
some etchy scenes, but I'm pretty sure this is a censored version, I hope. <laughs> I really hope it is a censored version because that'd kind of suck if we ran into a scene like that, but I'm pretty sure the dialogue would indicate that anyway, so. Um, let's see. Replace the lock. Leave the note. I'm probably going to replace the lock. That day during lunch, John stopped by a hardware store and purchased a small padlock. Taking great care to avoid letting anyone look, he used it to close his locker. There were no, message, no, no more messages for the rest of the day, but he couldn't escape the sensation that someone was staring intensely at him. Succe successful or not, just accomplish, accomplishing something made John feel a little better. As he went home and fell asleep, however, the sensation of being watched just got worse. When he woke up the next day, he felt even better. Things would be fine so long as he kept everything in perspective. Maybe. Making an effort to set the mystery of the locker aside, John went with his friends to the rooftop for lunch. They spread out on one side, enjoying the sight of the trees below. Midway through the meaningless conversation, John noticed that Lizzie was watching him from a far side of the roof. Her gaze was even more intense than before, so he uncomfortably tried to ignore her and focus on the conversation. Looks like the confession tree is full in full bloom, huh? You really believe those stories, true love and all? It works, man. I've got a buddy who just graduated. He swears he got so much... Confessing under it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that word because I just feel it just sounds wrong. Okay, I don't know Well, if he kept doing it, then it's not true love is it? Come on people have been confessing there for years. You seriously think everyone would confess under the tree if it did nothing Nah, man, I think it's a tree of lust. It doesn't guarantee true love just getting laid. If that was true, way more guys would be into it, but it's mostly girls from what I've seen. What do you think, John? I don't know. Aw, oh, don't be that way. You dream of you dream of a girl confessing to you under that tree, don't you? Yeah, like the crazy stalker chick. It'd make your heart go all flutter if she confessed, wouldn't it? That tree is magic, man. I'm telling you, even a sad sack like you could get lucky if you confessed there. Don't be stupid. It's just a tree. Whoa, someone has their panties in a twist. I'm telling you, everyone goes to their to... Only because people like you keep telling these stories. There's nothing magic about the tree. People just believe it's special because everyone else says it is. Girls think the tree's romantic, so of course they're more likely to agree there. And guys would have to, to turn someone down in front of the audience. That's all it is. Shit, man. What is wrong with you today? <laughs> with an attitude like that, you're never gonna get a girl. Haha, <laughs> you insulted the tree. I'll cock block you now. <laughs> that day, John couldn't get to his therapy appointment fast enough. Miss Smith smiled at him when he came in, but, apparent and, but immediately saw he was unhappy. Are you okay, John? Perhaps you should be on on a stronger formulation. No. Well, our session shouldn't make you feel better. Lie down and get comfortable. Miss Smith, does Paxine have any visual side effects? I should hope not. Koi Tech has the highest of standards of every drug it puts out, and Paxine's nearing its final clinical trials. Are you having any vision problems? John lay back and stared out the window. Was he really saw, seeing differently? Or was it all in his head? He stared at it a long time before he opened his mouth and just started talking. Everything just feels so... gray. So you are having vision problems. Not literally gray, it just... The sky today. I remember when I was younger. I always thought clouds were beautiful. Now it's like, there's just nothing there. Nothing that matters. I look up 
and I just don't care. That sounds more likely to be a mental issue. Then, why don't you get more relaxed and talk about it? Taking a deep breath, John did his best. As usual, after talking to Miss Smith for long enough, he felt not better necessarily, but at least not miserable. The session finally went by in a flash, and then he made—he had to head home. He shuffled through his routine easily enough, slept fitfully, and then returned to school barely more rested. But when he arrived, he found a huge crowd standing and staring. What's going on? You know the tree students like to confess under. The words made John shiver, even though he wasn't entirely sure why. He shifted to look through the crowd, and then he saw it. Ah shit! Someone burned it down. Parts of the tree were still burning, but the rest was was char. And ashes coated the ground near it. His throat was dry, as if all the ashes were filling it. What happened? The, the cops are coming to check it out, but the shop teacher said it looked like arson. Someone covered the tree in gasoline and burned it down. <laughs> See, this is why we need cameras. I've been telling the principal for years, but does he listen to me? No, no one thinks. The words slide off his mind, and John turned away without even saying goodbye. Not entirely sure what he was doing, he stumbled straight to his locker. His padlock was still holding his locker firmly closed, but he could see that a paper had been wedged into the slits. John took it out with trembling hands. I didn't like that tree either. He sta stared at the words as if they were a foreign language. Wishing he could avoid understanding the conclusion, I don't like this tree, that tree either. It was her. It had to be. None of his friends would be that insane. And what would be the point of a prank like that? But what was the point of her, for her? What did she think she had accomplished? Should he tell someone? But this wasn't exactly evidence. And did he really want her to get in that much trouble? John decided he was being stupid like usual. He just needed to talk to her and find out exactly what's going on. Put an end to this. That day, whenever he was in the hallways, he could feel her eyes on him. With every passing moment, he became more sure that she had burned the tree down. He wondered if a normal person would be afraid now. But for him, it barely penetrated this numbness. He just wanted to find out what was wrong and put an end to it. It took until after school for him to find his chance. When the teacher handed out assignments, he volunteered to clean the roof. John stepped onto the roof and headed to the far side. After a few seconds, he heard the door open again. He ignored it and insisted on climbed up the tank. The upper area was meant to be blocked off. But the janitors had stopped putting up the ladder years ago. He turned, and his shock was she was already coming up the ladder behind him, reaching to reaching the top. She held her hands close to her chest and shuffled her feet demurely, but there was a spark in her eyes. Hello, Lizzie. Are you never going to greet me? Hello. Ah, I said it. I said it. Why are you following me? Because I... La, la... Could this girl really have burned down the tree? It didn't seem like she had it in her. Were you the one leaving me notes in the locker? Y yes. How did you know my combination? I... I watched you. Why... Did you get a new lock? Now, now I can't leave you things. Unless, 
Unless you wanted me to watch you. To learn the new combination. Is this a game? <laughs> the pluck. Thick. <laughs> nice. Thick. Extra thick. <laughs> John realized that he was in way over his head. Yet his mouth was still moving, asking the inevitable question. Why did you burn it down? Because it was a stupid tree. You're so smart. You said it was just right. It was awful and stupid and I hate it. And I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate, hate, hate. <sighs> it's all because of you, John. I could never do what needed to be done before. Now I can. She wasn't, she wasn't stable. She wasn't even close. What had had I can't even say it. <laughs> what had he gotten himself into? I finally found you. You're the only one for me. Part of him knew that he should be doing something. Run away. Call for help. Yet. Why? Huh? Why do you care about me? How can you ask that? You're... You're the best person. You're the only person. Bullshit! I'm just another high school boy. No. Not even that. I'm worthless. No! 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 Don't say that. It's not true. It's not. I'm broken. My brain doesn't work. Right. And even the strongest drugs don't make a difference. No, that's not true, John. It's perfect, perfect. How can you say those these things? The way her words flowed together, addressing him directly one moment and the third person the next, bothered him almost as much as he as the look in her eyes. Whatever her issue was, it went deep. You're not well, Lizzie. You need help. Ah, you. You said my name. But I can't help you. I'm not worth anything to anyone. Just forget about me and find someone else to care about. No. No, I can never. You're the only person who matters. But why? You don't even know me. You don't even care about me. I'm just just part of your problem no it would be better if I was gone maybe you'd get better then that's not true it's not I love you John I've always loved you <laughs> I've watched you always you're so good and kind and perfect and even to a girl like me he could barely even listen to your words John found himself wandering closer and closer to the side of the building, and she followed him automatically. You're so sad, but you're still kind. I don't know how. You should be broken, like me. But you... Whoa, hold, hold on a sec. You should be broken, like me. Okay. Mm hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I, I, hmm... I can't help you. If you want to help yourself, you need to forget about me and get real help. No. No, don't say that. You're... You're confused. Yes, confused. Poor John is so depressed he's not thinking straight. He doesn't understand how much I love him. Ah, oh, shit. It's about to get down, guys. <laughs> Holy shit. He needs my help. The world froze for a moment as the knife glitched, glistened, and all he could do was stare at its edge. You just need someone to take care of you. I'll stop everyone who says unkind things about you. No, no. I should just take you home and keep you there. Safe. Yes. You just need some help. Where the hell had she gotten that knife? Would she actually use it on him? A second later, John realized that was ah, a second later. John realized that was a foolish thought. 
This girl had burned down a tree because she said it was stupid. He had no idea if there were any limits on what she might do. <laughs> and would that really matter? He spent nights lying in bed wishing he had never been born, wishing he had had a way to end it all. <laughs> you can't threaten me. J John, get away from the edge. It's not safe. He took several steps to the very edge before she could stop him and turned around to, her fa to face her. The back end of his shoes hung off the edge of the building, nothing between him and a fatal fall. My life matters to you so much. My ah, <laughs> my life matters so much to you. Stop toying, stop toying around with me. No, no, you don't understand. What do you even want? To stab me until I'm yours forever? Is that it? Never. John is so good and kind. I would never need to stab him. Please come away. I'll take good care of you. What is wrong with her? Jesus Christ, dude. He's that persistent. You can't. Uh. Maybe you have good intentions, but you need help. And unless you get it, you can only hurt me. I will. I will. Whatever you want, I promise. Just don't hurt yourself. It was a lie. Of course. She was just saying whatever it took. He was just saying... She was just saying whatever it took to get him to step away from the edge. It was exactly how he'd imagined it would go. He'd stand at the edge and everyone would say all kinds of lies about how much he mattered to them because they'd care for it the first time. Not about him, but the, about the idea of him. But the look in her eyes, that couldn't be faked. It might be a twisted love, but she loved him utterly. I... She needed help too. Maybe he could be the one to help her, assuming she didn't stab him. But what the hell was he living for anyway? Lizzie, would you make a promise with me? A, a promise? I'll step away. I'll talk to you or let you leave notes in my locker or whatever it is you want. But you have to listen to me and get some help. Can you do that? You promise? You promise you won't leave me if I say yes? I won't leave you, Lizzie. Forever? The answer struck in his throat and he hesitated, wondering if he wasn't making a mistake and saying too much. But in the end, he swallowed and nodded. Forever. Ah! Now set down the knife and I'll... Whoops. As he started to step away, John lost his balance and fell backwards. Suddenly he was free f in free fall. Nothing between him and the cold pavement. At the moment, Lizzie lunged him forward insanely fast and grabbed his wrist. Impossibly, she held him up. Her body was thin, yet somehow she had stopped his fall and held him up with one hand. Her eyes had a mixture of unstable fear and twisted desire. In that moment, he knew the absolute certainty that if he had fallen, she would have thrown herself off after him. You can't die, John. You're the only one. The only one. With the same incredible strength, she pulled him up back to the rooftop. Unfortunately, she had left the knife behind when she was led to catch him. I can't even read right now. But he was still anxious being so close to her. John. John almost died. John. I love you. I won't let anything bad happen to you. It was clear she was completely unstable. But was she actually dangerous? She seemed to care about him more than anything. Or was she just a pathetic dead he'd latch onto anyone who showed him the slightest sign of affection? Worthless. You'll keep your promise, right? Of course, of course. Then tomorrow, we'll go talk to someone. See if we get, if we can't get you some medication. See if we can get, can't get you in some medication. Is that okay? If it's what John wants, then of course it's okay. 
Good. Then perhaps... But I want more than that. I love you, John. I've told you over and over. Don't you love me too? <laughs> the Ugandan warriors of of VR chat. Oh god, dude, those those guys are awesome. I, I actually should stream that next time. The Ugandan warriors and stuff. I used to be one. <laughs> it was pretty fun. At least she was asking you without the knife in her hand, but. Was there a good answer to that question? No. He had to think about it logically. She wanted him to answer yes, but that just makes her worse. The risk of saying no couldn't be ignored either, though. Cautiously say yes or let her down gently? Hmm. This is a black and white question here. Do I want to die vigorously? Or do I want to... Suffer for all eternity with an insanely sick girl. Which one should I say, guys? I'm gonna leave this up to you guys. Um, must be a jungle woman to be able to lift someone with that one hand. Yeah. Always get laid. Top priority. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Okay, so someone says yes. If if I see another person say yes, I'm gonna click yes. So. Okay, someone says yes. Cool, cool. Thanks, guys, for participating. Cautiously, say, cautiously say yes. Listen, I don't know you very well yet, but despite all of this, I think you're a good person. No. No, I'm awful. John is just being kind. And not answering the question. Aw, oh, shit. We, we're, we're avoiding the question. <laughs> I want to get to know you better, Lizzie. Maybe then I could love you. Ah, uh, he said it. He said it. John desperately hoped that wasn't a mistake. He hoped this was all a, wasn't a mistake. But he hadn't been stabbed yet and after how today had gone that was good enough for him then I'll see you later okay I'll be watching you but yes later you're not going to do anything crazy no John loves me that's all that matters we both need to go to we both need to get to class but we'll walk tomorrow okay okay the rest of the day was even more of a blur than usual. Everyone's voices not even echoing in his head. John could hardly believe what he had just done. It all seemed like a dream now. Had Lizzie really pulled a knife on him? Had he really threatened to jump off the school building? It made him wonder if he wasn't the insane one. But no, it had really happened. For better or for worse, he was stuck in this situation. Only when he was headed to bed did John realize that he felt strangely alive, even better than after his therapy sessions. Maybe it was the brush with death? Maybe it was just having something to think about other than his pathetic existence. But he felt... almost good. Maybe that meant he was crazy too? But right now, he was just glad to sleep soundly. In the morning, actually, I'm gonna save right here. In the morning, it all seemed even more unbelievable. John sleepwalked through his routine, half certain that he would find out it had all been a dream. But when he arrived at school, he found Lizzie waiting for him by the school entrance. She looked like she could have been waiting there f f the entire night. When she saw him, through her face, her face lit up. John, you're finally here. I've been waiting for so long. Uh, good morning. Yes, it's a wonderful morning. I spent so long too nervous to talk to you, afraid that you would hate me. But we had such a nice talk. Now I'm barely nervous at all. But my heart, it still goes crazy every time you get near, John. 
Isn't it horrible that we have to be in different classes? Lovers shouldn't be separated like this. Um... Will you eat lunch with me today? Please? Won't you? She could sound as so adorable. Normally, he'd be happy to have a girl like her asking to eat lunch together, but... Sure. On the roof again? No! There might be unkind people there, and you might feel sad again. No, I have the perfect place. Where is it? That's a secret. I'll show you at lunchtime. He really wasn't sure how he felt about that. For once, John had something to look forward to. Or dread. He wasn't sure. The minutes seemed to crawl by until it's finally lunchtime. When he went looking for Liz, Lizzie, he discovered that she was waiting behind him, completely silent, watching him. Ah, uh, hi, Lizzie. Let's go, let's go. We don't need to get go to the cafeteria this way. She practically dragged him away from the school and on, onto one of the paths in a nearby forest. Oh shit, you know it's never good it's never good when it's, there's forest involved. Soon they got far enough that they couldn't hear any sounds from the school. Here is perfect. Just perfect. Lizzie faced away from him, giving a sort of little laugh. S soft little laugh. Then suddenly, she whirled around, thrusting something toward him. A lunchbox. I worked really hard on this. You have to eat it. You have to. Uh, okay. Thanks, Lizzie. Oh, snap. I know exactly where this is going. I'm, how much you want to bet? I bet you $30 that that lunchbox is rigged with some kind of, like, sleeping drug or something like that. Just you watch. She gave me a little squeal and promptly sat down on the small rock. It seemed she had a second lunchbox of, lunchbox of her own. But she kept it on her lap until he opened his. John was braced for a horror show, but to his but to his surprise, it was just normal food. It actually looked pretty good. He took a bite, and it tasted good. John realized that Lizzie was staring at him intensely. Sign number one, guys. Sign number one, right there. As if her life was on the line. Sign number two. <laughs> there you go. Sign number two. So he smiled at her. It's really good. Yay. I worked so hard on it. So, uh, do you want to just eat together or... This is a date, isn't it? We should get to know each other other more. I, why did I say that twice? I want to know everything about you. Well, I'm nothing special. That's not true. Let me see. What to say? Despite himself, John found it easy to talk to her. He was sure he was sounding like an idiot, rambling about stupid mundane topics. Yet she listened to every word with rapt attention. It was bizarre to have someone actually care about his life. His father never had time. His friends were busy with other things. Miss Smith was just listening professionally. But Lizzie really cared. He knew that she wasn't real, that her obsession was probably a sickness, yet a pathetic part of him didn't care, he was just happy to have someone paying attention to him. Only after talking for a long time did he realize that he was talking about himself like a self-centered jerk. She didn't seem to mind, but he, he still felt guilty. Sorry, I've been talking a lot. I can do that sometimes. Oh, don't apologize. I like listening to you. Uh, I like listening to you talk. It's been pretty boring, though. I mean, you already know a lot about me. I want to know everything about you. I've been watching you for a long time. I know all the facts, but I still don't know everything. I can't see inside your head. That's where the important parts of John are. But I can't see them. I wish. I wish there was a way to crack open your head. See all the thoughts inside. 
John swallowed uncomfortably. Uh, you can always just ask me what I'm ask what I'm thinking, okay? Okay, you're so nice, John. So, Lizzie, tell me about yourself. Oh, there's nothing to tell. Not important. I just want to listen to you more. Yes, but if I want to know more about you, don't you want to tell me? Ah, John is so kind. I don't deserve him. So, what about your parents? I live alone now. Neither of my parents wanted me anyway. Oh, damn, that's pretty dark. Uh, Edison, does my Patreon reward still work? Uh, I'm actually planning on changing it, but yeah, they kind of, there are valid, except for the, um, the sending a CD part, that's gonna be changed to something else, so, yeah. I live alone now. Okay, I already said that. I'm, I'm sure that's not true. They probably just, you don't have to make me feel better. I don't mind. You don't mind that your parents... My father never loved me anyway, and my mother's dead now. Uh... My parents separated too. They never made it formal, but yeah, they're separated. Mom doesn't like to visit, and Dad is always at work, so it's like he's not really there. You mean they just leave you alone? How horrible! How dare they just leave you like that? Uh, clubs! Are you in any after-school clubs? When he wasn't pulling the conversation away from t troubling topics, John actually found himself enjoying their talk. Or maybe he was just happy to be talking to someone and actually managing to pay attention to the conversation. He finished every bite of lunch without thinking about it. Given the way he started stared at the last crumbs while he finished them. That was probably a good thing. Too late it occurred to him that she might have tampered with his lunch. Yet, as she stared at, st stared at him, so pleased that he had enjoyed it, John couldn't believe that she would do anything bad to him. As soon as he had the thought, he remembered the tree and shivered involuntarily as far as when the next yandere story is going to be up um i'm still working on the script so that's gonna probably be in like a week from now or something like that N not this week but the next following week because it, it takes a while because i also have to get a um arakachi to uh, voice and stuff like that but it's gonna be really good it's really interesting it's not like the other ones you've seen before so it's it's pretty, it's, it's not a lowly this time, so, just saying. After school, John had barely gone out of the door when he spotted Liz, Lizzie following him. It seemed as though she was stalking him at first, but when he made eye contact, she gave him a sweet smile and skipped forward. John, let's walk home together. Uh, do we live in the same direction? No, but don't worry, I'll walk back home to my house later which meant she did know where she lived. He really needed to be more cautious. Maybe we could do something else. You remember our promise? Yes. Getting, medi getting medicine and therapy has really helped me a lot. I hope it will help you too. Now, I think the easiest thing to do would take you to Miss Smith. She could... No. No. I hate her. She's awful and she wants to take you away from me. Wait a second. That's not true. She just wants to help. She... John is too nice. He can't see what kind of person she is. I have to protect him. Whoa, whoa, Lizzie. Wait, calm down. If you don't want to talk to Miss Smith, we can do something else, alright? Okay. So probably best not to choose a woman. There had to be a male 
Kotech, Koitech pharmacist in town. Maybe one of them could prescribe something. But he really wasn't sure how that worked. He had been counting on Miss Smith to guide the process, but now he'd have to figure it out himself. Lizzie, I need you to do some little research first, okay? Is that okay? Okay, I'll follow you. Uh, maybe it'd be easier if I did it myself. No, no, I don't like that idea. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? You can bring another lunch. Okay, see you tomorrow, John. He hoped that medis medication would help her stabilize. After all, she'd be cute if... Why exactly was he doing this? He had told himself it was to help her and make sure no one got hurt. But now he was hoping she could become normal and stay with him. Pathetic. He couldn't get a girlfriend normally, so he had to take advantage of some poor girl's obsession. For now, it didn't matter. She really did need help, and he might be able to get her to it. Able to get, get her to it. It was just a question of how. The best way was probably to ask for advice, either from Miss Smith or a pharmacist. He could try to research some himself, though he doubted he'd be any good at it. And he supposed, and supposed it wouldn't hurt to ask her if she was taking anything else or had allergies or something. Damn it. He should have done that earlier. Now it was too late, too. John realized that she was still following him. He shouldn't have been surprised. Okay, so asking her was still an option, but he only had so much time before he had to get home and do his homework. So he needed to choose carefully. Talk to Miss Smith, talk to the pharmacist, research in the library, talk to Lizzie, just go home early. Hmm, interesting, what will happen? Uh, let's see, if we talk to Miss Smith, she's probably gonna follow me home, or follow me to the Miss Smith's place, and she's probably gonna get really mad and jealous and we could die. If we talk to a pharmacist, um, I guess that's the logical, um, option right there. Research in the library, hmm, interesting. That could be an, that could be an interesting thing. Talk to Lizzie. <laughs> Lizzie. Get laid top priority. Yeah, totally. Uh, she's probably just gonna be like, oh, I was just following you as always, so. Just go home early. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. Uh, you got, Karuto says to go home early, so I guess we could go home early. Hmm. I kind of want to pick on research in the library, but nah. Talk to a pharmacist. I'm just gonna go with talk to a pharmacist, cause it seems more logical. I'm a logical person, so I'm just gonna pick honest questions or honest options that I would pick in a situation like this. Pakistan in religion. Yeah, totally, man. John explored the part of the town where he thought he remembered a Koitech pharmacy. It turned out his memory was right. It was staffed by a male ph pharmacist. The middle-aged man gave him a perfunctionary nod and listened patiently enough as John described Lizzie's symptoms without mentioning her directly. I'd recommend Paxine or Cyrozine. Either one can't... No! That's not enough! Excuse me? Young man, I don't think... I'm on Paxine. This isn't that simple of a problem. I'm... I'm worried she might hurt someone. I see. Is there something you should tell me, young man? No, I... I just want to help. I wish someone had made had made me get some help earlier, and I want to be that person for her. Hmm. If the condition is serious, I do have two suggestions. You need to a blood test to, to prescribe either one, though. What do you suggest? Either Nihilazine or Yandakwal? 
what the what? I don't I don't know what the hell those are. I'm just gonna make those up or pronounce that however I like, so. Nilazine. Nilazine is better for the problem is if the problem is mental. Quan Hyundai Quill is for problem emotional. What's the difference? Uh, isn't emotional and mental stability is the same thing? Unfortunately, it was probably both. Thanks for letting me know about those. I'll see if I can't convince her. Not many people your age would go to such trouble for a classmate. You're a good kid. Strangely, the man's words actually made John feel better. Maybe he was really doing the right thing with all of this. Stepping out onto the street, John glanced at his watch and decided he had some more time to research his options. Oh shit, okay. Um, just go to the library, I guess. Stopping by the library, John did his best to research possible medications among the books, even asking the librarians for help. It felt really ineffectual. He wished there was a better way to get information, but there wasn't a lot of options. In one of his classes, they'd claimed that computers would eventually make things easier, but their school couldn't afford any. What kind of school couldn't afford computers? Like, seriously, what the heck? One of the few things he could do was skim through various books about mental illness for references like symptoms like Lizzie's. To Lizzie's. Her case sounded much worse than anything he'd read, up about, read about. All the articles suggested that something mentally ill, mentally ill people were non-violent, but he knew that wasn't true of Lizzie. Though there wasn't a lot of current information about Koitek, he did find some. There were crackpots who felt their, felt their medicine was inefficient. Even Pakistan had critics who felt it was being rushed to the market. John forced himself to stop reading about that since it just made him feel worse. Instead, of he focused on selecting potential drugs for Lizzie. All the sources seemed to agree with what he had heard. The strongest drugs, Koi High... Koi... Why do I keep saying Koi High? I don't know, because it starts with Koi, so obviously I'm going to say Koi High. Koi Tech made for conditions like that were Yan de Quill and Nilzine, or whatever whatever the fuck they call it. I don't, I don't know. It was getting late, and John realized he needed to get home quickly if he wanted to give time for this homework. On his way back, he was sure that Lizzie was following him, but couldn't get a cl clearer look at her. At least it was the only, only one more day until the weekend. Friday passed faster than John had expected. Lizzie was nearby at all times, and they ate lunch together. But things were almost normal. Almost. Just when he started to get comfortable, she would give a giggle that won't, that went on a little too long, or slide a hand toward where she had her knife, or respond far more enthusiastically than she should. Was it bad of him to think she was really cute despite all that? She could be nice if she wasn't so... well. But John hated it when his friend suggested he could be fun if he wasn't depressed, and that thought left an ugly nod in his stomach. Well, it wasn't long now. Maybe she could get some real help. He made it. Th he made it through his first class, last class, almost slept through his session with Miss Smith, then headed home. John finished his homework and chores as fast as he could and went to sleep. Going out in public always drained him, and he wanted to have enough energy for the weekend. He woke up too early. His gritty, his uh, eyes gritty and head still mired in half-remembered dreams. John got up to get a drink and happened to glance out the window. Lizzie was standing outside his house with a huge smile on her face. Well, if that ain't creepy, I don't know what is. After staring at her for a moment, John groaned and went back to bed. The second time he woke up, the sun had already risen. He felt a little better, but not much. Normally he would stay at home all weekend, but he couldn't do that if he wanted to help Lizzie. She was still standing outside his house, in exactly the same place with exactly the same cheerful expression. John brushed his teeth, got dressed, and combed his hair. He realized that he was acting like he was getting ready for a date. True, he had so sort of accepted her confession. John decided that it was just what he had done. Have to, 
what he have to deal with now if he wanted to have a connection with her. Well, at least he was going to go out with a cute girl. He hadn't done that since middle school, and those were child childish relationships. Of course, this was the only way he could get a date. Pathetic. Finishing his preparations, Sean headed outside. He hadn't noticed from, from his house, but Lizzie had gotten dressed up from, for the occasion. He had never seen her outside her school uniform, and it made her hesitate for a moment. She obviously put effort into making herself look good, and she did it. It would have been nice, if not for how it made him worry about the level of importance she had she was attaching to the, to the day. As soon as Lizzie saw him, her smile became even brighter than it had been for a while while waiting. John, I'm ready. Good morning, Lizzie. Did you sleep alright? Oh, I didn't sleep. Let's go. Uh... <laughs> she practically dragged him down the street, apparently heading for the bus station. Yet instead of looking forward, her gaze was fixed behind her or on him. Do you have a plan, John? This is our first date. It needs to be perfect. Uh, shit. He should have known she'd treat it this way. It wasn't like he hadn't had enough time. He used to be good at planning. What was wrong with him? Other than clinical depression. <laughs> wow, okay. God, he was such a mess. Alright, he had to think. He used to be able to think on his feet. He could do this. So, uh, I want to deal with the medication issue first so the rest of the day can be fun, right? Sure, whatever you want. If we get a blood test, we'll need to wait for a while. I was thinking we could get the test first, then eat breakfast and get the results. That should give us the entire rest- that- that should give us the entire rest of the day. Whoa, go back, I- Sure, whatever you want. That's such a great plan. Let's hurry. John was glad to hear her response so happily, but wondered if she would have said that no matter what he told her. <clears throat> oh, my voice is getting kind of dry. Sorry. They took a bus across town to the furthest pharmacy and ordered a standard Coitex sample. I have no idea, dude. I don't, this game is weird, so I, I don't know. He'd been nervous that Lizzie might react poorly to the needle, but she just smiled sweetly to him while they took a bit of her blood, then hopped back up. Look, the band-aid has little kittens on it. It's so cute. You want to eat something now? Then... Yes! Oops, I skipped one. They walked to a nearby bakery and he bought them a pair of pastries. One of the only advantages of his workaholic father was that at least he had a decent amount of spending money. Lizzie held hers in both of her hands and began cheerfully nibbling on the end of it. She sh stared at him while she was doing it. Uh, but otherwise, she looked ordinarily cute instead of, of scarily cute. Nom nom nom. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know you could act so silly. Hee <laughs> hee. I don't hear you laugh very often. Usually it looks so sad. And that makes me sad too. And like that, his good mood crumbled. I know. I'm always ru ruining everything. I don't know why anyone stays near me when I just... No! Lizzie took his pastry and stuffed it in his mouth to shut him up. You're not depressing at all, John. Just being around you makes me feel warm inside. I just want to see you smile more. When you smile... I feel like maybe everything will be all right. Oh, um, mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> His attempt to talk around the pastry made Lizzie giggle, which made him laugh, which just set off a vicious cycle. After a fit of cough, a fit of coughing, he had lost half of his pastry but regained his good mood. It had been a long time since an emotional downturn hadn't sent him spiraling down depression. Lizzie grinned at him and he smiled back at her. All at once, he felt guilty for trying to convince her to take medication. Who was he? Who was that? Ah, who was he to tell her what to do? Worse, was he manipulating her obsession like this? 
It was only to help her, but did that make it any better? The thoughts troubled him, but they remained in the back of his mind as they finished eating, talking lightly. But then they were finished, and it had been a while since the test. It was time to go back. Let's go get the results, okay? Well, will John think differently about me? No, I just want to find a way to help you, okay? Okay. She answered cheerfully, but something in the lightheartedness they had shared was gone, and it wasn't coming back. Swallowing, John steeled himself and walked away with her back to the pharmacy. Lizzie slowed near the entrance, then shuffled backward. I'll stay here. You can bring me what I need, okay? Uh, okay. No problem. Inside, he found the pharmacist writing something on the clipboard. When he spotted John, he immediately frowned. You're alone? I suppose that's for the best. Anyway, we need to talk. Is something wrong? She's not sick, is she? It isn't that kind of test. It only takes a snapshot of a person's current condition. Is your friend going through a difficult time right now? Well, I, I mean, maybe a little. These are some extreme, extraordinary numbers. Most people only see these briefly during the worst days of their lives. Take care of her until things pass, alright? Uh, okay. There's, there's something else I have to ask. It won't be comfortable, but it's necessary. Have you ever gotten any sense that she might hurt herself or anyone else? No, I can't imagine her doing anything like that. Right, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. After she tried, she, I don't know. After she burned a tree down and literally was gonna do something with her, with that knife on the roof that one time. But yeah, it's whatever. The lie was a was out of his mouth before he had co even consciously decided to lie. John regretted it immediately, yet now it was too late to contradict himself. The pharmacist grunted and looked over his papers. Well, keep a close eye on we'll keep a close eye on her. Even the gentlest person could be capable of violence under conditions like these. Is it is it really that bad? I thought she seemed better lately. No, there must be some recent trauma she hasn't told you about. I'm certain of it. I mean, someone with numbers like these regularly, they would be completely incurable, insane probably, and definitely a threat to society. Damn, dude. S seriously? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply anything. I'm sure she'll work through things and go back to normal soon. So, can you prescribe anything? I can give you two weeks of either Yan Yanquil or Niz Nalzine. That should get her over the rough patch. Just two weeks? Can't you prescribe more? Not without a much more extensive evaluation. But like I said, that's all you that's all you'll need. I'm sure she'll recover soon. I really should be asking her directly, but in her present condition, I think it'd be safer to bend the rules and let you act as a family member. So which one, which do you think would be best for her? Okay, so the first one, uh, crap, I forgot. I, I think one of them is emotional and the other one's a mental state kind of thing. I think the Neilazign or whatever the hell Nyquil, yeah, totally Nyquil, because you know Nyquil always works, right? Niles, I, I think that one's the mental one, and Yan Yanda Quill is the um, emotional one. So I'm just going with Nyzen. Two weeks of Nyzen coming up. Try to help her rest, okay? Yeah, okay. Heading outside, John had handed the bag to Lizzie. He. C he had pushed pretty hard to get to this point, but, the, but he would never force her to take the medication. His father had used to used to like he didn't. Ah, I can't even read right now. His father had used to talk like he didn't have a choice about depression medication. Practically threatened to force feed him. John refused to do that to anyone else. But Lizzie didn't make make an issue out of it. Smiling at him, she opened the bag shook out one of the pills and swallowed it without even thinking, taking a drink. She'd given the label a careful look though. 
Okay. I hope you can love me now, John. Lizzie, no, I never met anything like that. Please don't. Uh, that didn't taste bad at all. So, can we go on our date? On with our date now? John, can we? He wanted to go back to what she had said, reassure her that he meant nothing wrong by it. But his words stuck in his mouth. Maybe on some level he did mean to force her. Maybe he was re re repeating everything that he had been done to her. But with Lizzie smiling at him like that, he couldn't fall too far into depression. Instead, John smiled back and gestured for her to follow. Without any great ideas, John, throughout the day, thought, thought they should go back to the park. Their town had a pretty nice park, and it was usually empty this time of day. His friends always said that the movie was the best first date, but the, he suspected they mostly wanted to try a co Copa Field. Besides, he was worried Lizzie would end up watching him instead of the movie. In the park, Lizzie happily skipped along the paths, often looking back at him, but at least looking at a lot of other things. Oh, hey, Kikosan. As he watched, he realized that she was definitely calmer than usual. Her sweet cheerfulness seemed natural, not maniac. And she even smiled at people that passed them sometimes. <clears throat> oh, hold on. Oh, my throat. Could it really be the nihilism? Or whatever that, whatever you want to call that. taken weeks to work and what, whether or not it actually helped had been really unclear. Then again, Lizzie was her own case. Of course, it took more than drugs to cure a serious condition. He knew that all too well. As Miss Smith had said, therapy was also an important component of recovery. Hers had certainly helped him a lot. The third main component was a socially support network, and there he completely failed to take her advice. He still spent most of his time alone or in meaningless old relationships. But hey, now he was walking in a park with a girl his age. Maybe things were looking up. Hmm, I don't think so, man. And for once in his life, things went his way. Lizzie was happy to eat fast food for lunch and didn't even try to feed him anything. Afterward, he was pretty much out of plans and Lizzie didn't want to stop. Fortunately, she had happy. She was happy to drag him around town to see random things. In a way, he was grateful for that. He had spent all his energy for making decisions during the morning. It was easy to just glide along in her wake, and that way, she was a good match for him. When the sun started setting, John was actually surprised. Had the day really passed by that quickly? He could barely drag himself through a lot of weekends. This was a welcome change. Holy shit, is that John? <laughs> With the girl? Uh, hey guys. Is that some crazy chick you told me about? Oh yeah, that's definitely her. Are you that desperate, John? Given how much of a sad sack he's been lately, I'm pretty sure he is. Do any of you... G do any of you have girlfriends? Mm. <laughs> I, I, I'll take that as a no. You guys talk some... You guys talk so much shit. Just leave Lizzie out of it, okay? Oh, fuck you, John. If she wasn't crazy, you could never get a girl as cute as her. She is pretty hot. I don't get why she's with you. Yeah, this really doesn't make any sense. Aw, uh, John, are you going to cry? Better not. Or she'll realize how pathetic you are. His positive mood com has completely gone. He knew he should check to see li how Lizzie was taking the mocking, but it was the most he could do and not fall into a mire of self-hatred. As always, he felt like he should be stronger than this, less emotionally fragile, and that just added to his self-hatred. If it had been anyone else, he might have crashed completely, but he knew these guys. He was at least familiar with their attitude. John pulled, un pulled himself together and faked a smile at them. 
Sounds like sour grapes to me. You all have fun with each other, okay? Come on, Liz. Lizzie. Let's get out of here. His classmates just scuffed. John considered taking Lizzie's hand and pulling her away, but worried about how she would react. And after a moment of hesitation, it was too late. Listen here, you piece of... Without warning, Lizzie stepped past John and directly into his classmates' faces. He caught a glimpse of her and she seemed strangely focused. And he could see only the back of her head. John is a good person. Holy shit, she's practically humping you! You... You shouldn't think, say unkind things about good people. Her voice sounded sweet. But his classmate took several steps back. John was suddenly very grateful that he had couldn't see her face. I've had a nice day today. I hope you all have a nice day too. Fuck this, we're out! They scrambled, just barely slow enough that they weren't running away. Lizzie stayed exactly where she had been standing, entirely still. John wanted to say something, but his mouth was too dry. Let's keep going, okay, John? Uh, sh sure. But they hadn't gotten far before John realized that he couldn't follow up with on that. He had pulled himself together long enough to walk away, but now he had nothing left. It was all too much. He wasn't really usually outside in a public, in public this much. And though being with Lizzie wasn't bad, he wasn't stable enough for th this much interaction. John, are you okay? I... I'm tired. I think I need to go home. Is... is something wrong? Did... did I some... did I do something wrong? He could hear the tremor in her voice. Kn in her voice. Knew she needed affirmation. But the apathy was choking him to death. He had no energy for anyone else. No energy for anything but getting back home curling up and wishing he was dead. Somehow he said goodbye, found the bus, and got all the way back home. The events passed like he, passed like he was suffocating in, in gauze, the world around him too unreal to have any effect. Maybe he should have re reassured Lizzie, but it didn't matter. He was an idiot of thinking, for thinking he could help her. Nothing he did mattered. Oh, Mr. Positive! Huh. <laughs> I'm gonna save right here. Because who knows what's gonna happen if I'm gonna get other options as well. Uh, okay, so I'm prob I'm gonna end it right here. Um, I know this is getting pretty good, and you guys probably like this. But mm, this is gonna be the last... Uh, not the last time, but this is gonna be it for today. Or for tonight. Um, tomorrow, though... If you guys are interested, tomorrow is movie night, which means um, I will be uploading a video tomorrow too, so um, it'll tell you when a movie night is. But basically, uh, I'm going to be showing a movie. I'm not sure what movie it is. It could be an anime movie. It could be just a movie movie, but I don't know what, whatever. But yeah, if you guys want to join me, um, I'm going to leave a link in the video that's going to be uploaded tomorrow. It's on Rabbit. Um... Uh, just so you know, Rabbit does have an app, so if you have a phone, um, you can just, you know, download that and join us for movie night tomorrow. Actually, we could be watching a Yandere movie if you guys want to. So, yeah. Shout out to Bleach, because, you know, you got to drink that bleach. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, it's it's been fun. It's it was this is a really interesting game. I give it like a, a nine out of ten because uh, she thick, she extra thick. So you know, gotta love that thick thick girls, thick thighs save lives. But yeah, um, yeah. See you guys tomorrow if you guys are up for it. But yeah, thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't yet because we're always having fun on these streams. So yeah, talk. Talk to you guys later, and be careful, because it's really snowy out there, and it sucks, but yeah. Alright, I'm, I'm just gonna end it right now. Yeah.